Hello, I want to welcome you to Prophecy Files Briefing, and I hope that you've been enjoying the messages we've been bringing here, these uh, short little clips to help you to be able to realize just how close we are to the coming of the Lord. And I hope you'll share it out on your social media like many of you have been doing. We are increasing in the audience, and that's what we need to do is get the word out about the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Today, I want to focus in on the nation of Israel as it relates to Bible prophecy and specifically from the Old Testament. So stay with me for just a moment. There's some information you need to hear from straight from the article, and this is the title of the article, Biden and Bibi, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, Red Lines, for Rafa put them on a collision course. I truly believe it could be a collision course with America. Here's what the article says. President Biden and the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu laid out contradictory red lines about the war in Gaza in recent days that could put them on a collision course if Israel invades Rafah in the southern Gaza in the next few weeks. This is what three officials told Axios, this particular uh, author of this article. Why does that matter? The article reads, the U.S. officials say an Israeli military operation in Rafah would likely lead to a significant shift in United States policy. Uh, including an end to the defense of Israel as the United Nations and restrictions on the use of uh, United States weapons by Israeli defense forces in Gaza. Now, what's driving this? According to the interview on Saturday, President Biden was asked whether an Israeli military operation in Rafah was a red line for the administration, and he said, yes, it is. A third United States official, this article says, is likely uh, said it is likely that Israeli operations in Rafah will lead to the United States allowing a UN Security Council resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire to pass. The United States has vetoed resolutions brought to the Security Council three times since the beginning of the war on October the 7th last year. If Netanyahu, they said, decides to defy, to defy Biden and go for such an operation, it will be a showdown according to a senior U.S. official. Now, I want you to understand from this particular article and many, many others how important and significant it is that uh, the, the uh, strategy and the communications and all that you're hearing in the news concerning Israel and the United States and a two-state solution and withdrawing uh, funding and all of that kind of thing to cease and desist against Hamas has all been resisted by the Prime Minister, Mr. Netanyahu, because it's not the first time that he has heard this kind of statements coming from the United States leadership. This article, in short, reads that Israel must change course in Gaza to keep international support, according to the Foreign Minister of Australia. In this article, uh, she is quoted as saying that if President Biden said on Saturday that uh, Netanyahu was hurting Israel, more than helping, as she, this article reads. And she goes on to say in this article that, uh, that Israel will lose its support if it doesn't have a ceasefire very soon. Look at the pressure being applied to the nation of Israel. Now, another article, and you may not have heard about this, but there is a continual attack happening from uh, the Houthis in Yemen. This one in just recent hours of this recording against the United States ship Pinocchio in the Red Sea, as well as just a few hours ago, the UN is hearing having hearings uh, on Hamas and the sexual violence that took place. In fact, a special envoy was brought in as she witnessed firsthand what is said to be, quote in this article, scenes of unspeakable violence. However, the Russian uh, ambassadors to the UN said that it is half truths what she's saying, that it didn't actually happen. My friends, the pressure that's being applied to the nation of Israel by all of the nations is one more indicator of the Ezekiel 38-39 war. But for the United States of America, it sets us on a course of collision with the nation of Israel, whose God is Jehovah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that has serious consequences, uh, not only in history for the United States, but even in our future, as we would take positions against the nation of Israel and the Jewish people. So over the past few weeks, 
President Biden has also been in the forefront of demanding that Israel accept a two-state solution with the Palestinians in a way of appeasing them. Uh, in other words, he would uh, reward Hamas uh, for their barbarism by giving them the land in Gaza uh, that rightfully belongs to Israel, according to the word of God. And many other things that are found in this. I'm summarizing this for you to have an understanding that this is not just something that has been talked about or seen or heard uh, in what is happening right now. Many people have a convenient set of memory loss when it comes to the nation of Israel. The actions by the Biden administration toward Israel places the United States on a dangerous position uh, for a lot of reasons, not to mention the very first in fact from the book of Genesis that it brings God's curse upon a nation that will trifle itself, according to the Bible, with the nation of Israel. The Bible says in Genesis 12, 3, I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse them that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That word curse there deals with trifling or trifling with the nation of Israel. This is very important because uh, God has given the land to Abraham and his descendants, not to any other people group or descendants of uh, any other group, but to the nation of Israel and the Jewish people. Not only does it set a collision course for that, but it also is the prospect that is now on the table, once again, of a two-state solution, which in effect is the dividing of the land. Now stay with me. From the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse number 1, the Bible says this, for behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land, divided my land. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. This is so important because my friends, we're living in such a prophetic time and yet history confirms prophecy from the word of God. All you've got to do is take a look at it. Now, what you've been hearing me talk about right now is too much to contain in one setting. So I want you to make sure you join me once again for the Prophecy Files briefing concerning Israel and how America is on a collision course. <laughs>